Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. I thought with the market dumping, we should at least go live um, and see what is going on. So, um, let me... Okay, I think I have everything pulled up. All right, so looks like Bitcoin's now at 44,290. Uh, might be worth pulling up the volume. I don't always pull up the volume, but uh, a lot of times we'll have these major wicks that come with these volume, uh, nice volume. Um, I mean, honestly, it's not, from a liquidation perspective, there were some longs that were liquidated, but all things considered, it's actually not that impressive of a dump, <laughs> if we're being completely honest. Um, so, I, I certainly would be prepared uh, for potential more downside. I mean, one of the things we've looked at before, this initial wick over here took us all the way down to 42,886. Probably depends on what exchange you're using, uh, but around 42,886. And a lot of times we do see our, you know, we do see Bitcoin sweep the lows, right? We will see, and we saw that happen over here as well back in, back in the summer. And it was, in fact, a long grind back in the summer as well. Um, and maybe it's better visualized with these uh, these Heikinashi candles. I'm probably not even pronouncing it right, but uh, these candles. Maybe going over to a slightly longer time frame so that it's not, um, so that you get a little bit of a smoother smoother look to it. Yeah, I mean, look, these things aren't going to, to, to repeat identically. And, and this is one of the things that we've said before is you, you can't assume that anything that's happened in the past is going to happen identically in the future. But there are certainly similarities so far with the initial wick down to the downside, a slow downtrend, a very brief move to the upside, and then a continued downtrend coming down to the lows that we initially saw. And then, and maybe I can actually smooth that out a little bit. Um, so, you know, coming back down to that level. And then so far in this one, you know, you see something fairly similar, right? You see, you have that initial move to the downside to the, to the liquidation wick, that brief move back up to the upside, and then, you know, the continued, the continued downtrend. Okay, so look, I, I don't think we are anywhere close to having a, you know, um, a mania phase, right? I mean, retail just simply is not here right now. I've, I've looked at, I've looked at the, uh, the YouTube stats as well. And I mean, if you're still here, honestly, you're probably, um, uh, that's at least somewhat impressive. I mean, a lot of retail has left. To be, I mean, if I if I pull up my my the social stats on my channel, I can show you what I mean. Uh, so let me go to the analytics. Go over to lifetime. Okay, so what I mean is is retail has I mean they they've just gone to a large extent right now, and they probably I mean like completely honest they probably won't return until Bitcoin makes a new all-time high, okay? They, they just won't. And, and that's just what we've seen happen with Bitcoin before. They, they likely won't return until Bitcoin makes a new all-time high. Uh, you can see recently that, you know, just interest has dropped off a cliff by, by retail investors, right? It's just dropped off a cliff. And so that's why I'm saying we, we still likely have quite a ways to go because retail is not going to return until Bitcoin puts in a new all-time high more than likely. If you're still here, um, then I imagine, I mean, I imagine if you're still here, you're probably just gonna wait it out. But I do know that a lot of people have, have already left and they've moved on to something else because they're just bored with the market. And, and certainly these periods in, in Bitcoin's, um, you know, in, in Bitcoin's price structure can scare a lot of people off for sure, right? I mean, these, these are not fun times to say the least. Now, one of the things we've also mentioned is that while technically speaking, for the last several weeks, you could argue that it was somewhat of a sideways move. Now it's, you know, now we've certainly put in a new, a new low, um, at least in the short term, right? At least in the short term. I mean, not, not lower than this one over here. But if we look at weekly candles, 
Uh, so if we look at weekly candles, you can see, I mean, it, it's, it's still a downtrend, okay? Um, and, and most notably, these Heikinashi candles, unless we're getting a close, and by the way, remember the close is calculated differently, but unless we're getting a close above the prior midpoint, uh, above the midpoint of the prior candle, you could still argue that sentiment is just garbage, right? And, and, it's, and, and people are going to look at this like in a downturn. That's not to say that you're not shopping sideways for weeks at a time, but you're, you're just spending a lot more time at lower and lower prices each time. And so, I mean, to give you full reference, the summer lull that we all experienced, the, the red candles really started here with one, with one green candle. If we take it from this point and go over, I mean, it, it took 11 weeks before we, before, uh, on 11 weeks before we actually saw move back up to the upside. In this instance, we're now at about seven weeks, okay? So, again, it's likely not going to be an, uh, an exact repeat of, any, of anything specifically, but certainly we have been in this situation earlier, or say like in the middle of, of 2021. Um, so, let's go back over to the normal candles. So now we're, you know, we're, we're actually starting to test these. This, so this is where we had that September drop, if you remember. And we had a couple of wicks below, below that level. This, this level here is at around 43K, right? So we're now starting to test those levels. As I've said before, um, you know, I, I, I don't expect any type of, I mean, it's obviously... It's obvious at this point, right? But I, I've been saying for a while, I don't expect a mania phase in Q1, probably not Q2. Earliest, realistically, is getting deeper into 2022. Q3, maybe, Q4. Um, but I, I don't anticipate a, a major a major mania move anytime soon. Now, if you look at, at sort of some of these other indicators that we've looked at, this one is the the corridor, and that's actually done a fairly decent job of of showing sort of what's theoretically possible for Bitcoin, at least since we developed it. I mean, it's not like I developed it that long ago; it's just somewhere over here. But it got this move to the downside. Clearly, we're not at the at the worst possible scenario yet uh, in this environment. But what it does show is that the current range, according to the corridor, ranges from 34,000 up to 129,000. So 34 up to 129. Um, if we go look at the, the fair value, and by the way, I know people were commenting earlier that I need to go on, like I haven't been doing as many videos. I'm actually sick right now, so I'm trying to, I'm just trying to, to come on here and, and do a really quick update because everyone, everyone's asking for one. If we look at the um, at the the fair value, so the fair value is, is basically the logarithmic regression curve. And, and remember, I, I think this is a, a key distinguishing factor between, say, logarithmic growth or the idea that will generally track logarithmic regression curve over the stock to flow model. I've always said I think the stock to flow model is is too optimistic and you know, you, you can't just go up 10x every four years forever, right? Like, you, you can't just do that um, forever. And, and in order for us to really keep pace with that, we'd have to go to 200K um, already. And we're just simply not there. So I don't really see an average price of 100K being hit within the next two years. But that doesn't mean we can't hit 100K in the next two years. But remember, the stock to flow model is based on averages, not absolute bottoms and tops. So... Uh, with that in mind, I mean, I, I do think that at least here in the short term, it, it looks like the logarithmic growth is is looking a lot more realistic than than the stock to flow model. OK, I mean, it's just just I, I think it's fairly clear at this point that we're, we're not going to we're not going to have like an average price of either two hundred and eighty eight thousand or one hundred thousand this market cycle. Doesn't mean we can't go higher than we are now, but. I think the problem, and, and we, I talked about this with Plan B when we had him on the channel, is that, you know, next cycle is where I think the models are going to significantly diverge. So this cycle, we're sort of in between both models, right? The stock to flow model and the logarithmic regression, we're sort of in between both models. Next cycle, I think they will substantially diverge because, you know, it's predicting an average price of over a million dollars next cycle which is just, I, I don't think so, right? I, I don't think Bitcoin's going to make it to an average price of 1 million. 
uh, by the next market cycle. And I think a lot of people don't understand the average the average scenario, right? They say that you know that that if if stock to flow predicts like 1.1 million for next market cycle, then that means Bitcoin's going to go to 1.1 million. The model is actually predicting an average price, okay? And and to get to an average price of 1 million, you know, you probably need to be going well above 1 million, okay? So again, I, I, I would argue that, uh, I, I would say the stock to flow model has been relatively useful for, you know, maybe newcomers in identifying wind, you know, after the halving that we would see some type of impulsive move. But unfortunately, I do not see us keeping pace with it, especially next market cycle. Even if this one, you could still make a, a, a potential case for it. Um, I do think logarithmic growth is, is actually much more realistic. And, and one of the reasons I would argue that it's more realistic is because, you know, it, it basically is accounting for diminishing returns, right? You, you would expect that more of the growth happens early on, right? So that's why the slope is, you know, it's a steeper slope. But that over time, it, it sort of curves over because it, it just cannot keep pace with that same type of growth forever. OK, so I think that's sort of uh, the idea. And so I'll, I'll stick with this model um, and, and, of course, logarithmic regression bands. So this is if, I, if you want me to pull that one up, that's what it looks like. Right. So right now we're still in no man's land. OK, if we pull up the logarithmic regression bands, we're still very much in no man's land. Um, you know, we're sort of in the middle. And this is where we've been for quite a while in fact i mean really since the summer early summer of 2021 bitcoin has has been spent a lot of its time in in no man's land where it's not at the top of the curves it's not at the bottom of them it's just sort of in the middle of them okay and you know i would argue well, that we will likely spend a lot of time in between these two curves uh, you know, I, I don't see us going back down to down to this level. This is like 12K. I don't think we're going to go back down to that level. I do think we'll go back down to the, the bottom of the logarithmic regression curve eventually, but I don't think we're going to go down to it now because I don't. I mean, I don't really consider 12,000 um, uh, a realistic possibility. But this is where we currently are. If we kind of look at the market structure that we have right now, we've more or less just been trading between 30 and 60K. All right, so this is essentially where we've been trading between since uh, for about the last year or so. So for about the last year, Bitcoin has been trading in that range between 30 and 60K. Obviously, we went slightly above 60K uh, back here and then also right here as well. But a majority of, of the time, let me shift that up to 30K. So a majority of the time has been spent between 30 and 60K. And right now we're actually sort of in the midpoint. So the midpoint obviously being 45K. So if I draw 45K on, on the chart, that's close. Well, um, this is close enough to 45K. That's where 45K is. You might say, well, that looks like it's above the midpoint. Uh, well, do remember this is a logarithmic scale. If you shift it, if you shift it to a linear scale, that's what it looks like, right? Um, so let me remove the arrows. So we're essentially at the midpoint of this of this range that we've been in. So 30K all the way down here. We've spent a lot of time there. 60K is up here. And then now we're, we're back to around the midpoint. So, you know, I, I think it's we'll, we'll be testing pretty soon whether we're going to hold above 40K or not. Uh, let me go back to log. So. Basically, one of the observations that we've made is that historically, historically, Bitcoin has not gone below the prior area that it held the line at the 20 week SMA. Again, this is not this is not me saying that it can't. It's just me saying that it never has. So if I pull up the, the bull mark sport band, that's what it looks like. So historically, anytime we held the line here, at the 20 week SMA, we've actually never gone below that level. If we break below it, all bets are off uh, and we can, you know, we can go back to wherever we held it the last time. And, you know, here we held it right there at around uh, just over $3,000. And that's ultimately where we held back over here. But that also corresponded to the logarithmic regression band, not the 20 week SMA. That was just the bottom of the bear market. So it looks like we're going to test this theory relatively soon. I mean, I have no idea if it's going to pan out or not, to be completely honest, uh, you, so you certainly could make a case that we could go back down to the bottom of the range and then come back up. Right? You could certainly make this case as well. 
Um, but we'll see if we hold it at 40K. So 40K is only about $4,000 below where we currently are. I do imagine that there will be some fight at that level if, if we make it that low. I have to imagine there would be some fight at that level. Um, so we'll continue to follow this. Uh, if we pull up the, the fair value in between these two other charts, let me see if I can, so this one, you can see that the yellow one is in fact converging to the green one. And the yellow one, the fair value of the logarithmic regression curve for Bitcoin is now at around $32,000. So, you know, it's not saying that Bitcoin has to go to 32K, it's just where the fair value is currently. Back in, in, you know, in November of 2020, the fair value was at 20K. And that was when we, we actually hit 20K and went above it. In, in July of 2019, the fair value was at 10K. Okay, so I mean, it just the fair value according to the logarithmic regression curve is just monotonically increasing. So like back in June in the summer, the fair value was 25K. Back in October, the fair value was around 30, a little less than 30K. And now that we're in January, the fair value is 32K. All right, so we're currently still um, about, if we go to the fair value and go up, we're still currently about 42% or so above the fair value. So from here, uh, I guess we'll just see, I mean, look, I don't know what's going to happen in the short term. Uh, the stock market took an absolute dump today. It's dumped about one and a half percent. I'm sure you guys saw the, you know, the minutes released by the Fed about their December meeting. You know, I skimmed over it. It seemed fairly expected what was in it. Like it, I didn't really see anything that was that unexpected. I mean, maybe there was some slight, imp you know, maybe there was, um, maybe it was slightly implied that they would have to speed things up. But I, I don't know, like, I mean, I, I skimmed it and, and it seemed like what we were already expecting, right? You know, some supply chain issues, um, you know, they have to deal with inflation, same thing, right? Same, the same stuff we've seen before. But despite that, right, despite that, it did not the stop, it did not stop the market from reacting to it because the, the minutes were actually released at, 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 at uh, two o'clock Eastern, I believe. So that's where the minutes were released. And you can see that the stock market, I mean, just took an absolute dump after they were released, right? Uh, the other thing is that after they were released, the dollar, if you had to guess, right, what did the dollar do right when it was released? The dollar went up significantly right after the release of the minutes by the Fed. So, you know, I mean, sometimes markets can just overreact to things. I, again, I skimmed it and it didn't really seem like anything was out of the ordinary. I, I normally would assume that markets don't react to, you know, these press releases or they don't react necessarily to, to, to like the exact policy they react to if the policy is different than what they expected because the market has a way of pricing things in, right? So, you know, like if, if interest rates, if, if if interest rates go up or if interest rates go down or if people are expecting that, then by the time you know about it, it's, you know, theoretically, you could argue that it's already been priced in. So I generally like to think that markets react to not what is said in terms of like the exact policy, but they, they react to whether the expect, if the expectation is different than what was, or if what happens is actually different from the expectation. Again, I skimmed it, maybe I missed something didn't really seem like it was that uh, surprising to me, but certainly, but certainly that is, I mean, that's basically right when the market started to, uh, you know, this is, this is when the market started to move some. So the dollar went up and stocks came down. Okay. Now with that in mind, I mean, the stock market is still up a lot and it's still actually well above the 20 week SMA itself. I'm not going to spend much time on it, but I just wanted you guys to show you that you know, even with this one and a half percent drop in the stock market, it still put in a new all-time high this year, and we're only on we're only on January fifth. Okay, so um, certainly things in the short term can always seem can always seem somewhat scary. We'll see what happens tomorrow as well. Once once the market has time to actually uh, digest the news of what was in the release. So uh, going back to Bitcoin, so this is what we're looking at. There's the corridor. I move the fair value. So 
This bottom over here corresponded to around 29K. We spent some time around the midpoint over here. Now we're back around the midpoint. The most obvious thing that Bitcoin needs to do is, I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science, right? It's just it's stop the bleeding. And until, you know, I'd say one way you could argue that the bleeding is at least temporarily stopped is just look at the Heikinashi candles and see if, see if you actually get a green weekly candle, right? As long as the candles are red, sentiment is still awful. You know, it's just absolutely awful. Um, sorry, I haven't actually, I haven't actually checked the chat. Okay, everyone's saying. <sighs> All right, so you know, if you're if you're curious about a potential like when's the bleeding gonna stop, and you you're you're skeptical about putting more money into the market, I would I would look at these candles and 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 see if we actually get a weekly green. You can note that once the summer lull stopped, it was when we had our first green weekly candle. And I mean, yeah, like if you hadn't bought, if you didn't buy at all down here, and, and then you waited for the first green candle to buy up here, then you would have actually missed, you know, the best opportunity. But at the same time, you know, if you're just not someone who wants to, to catch the falling knife, so to speak, then it, it might not be the worst idea. So look to see when we're going to get some shift here clearly it's not going to be this week probably not going to be next week remember these things have a way of uh, of being read even if from one week to another we have a higher close just because it, it takes into the it, uh, into account the midpoint from the prior candle okay so do consider that so i would, I would look at these candles and, and and potentially look to see okay well when are we actually going to get a green candle and then realistically you want to see one with no shadows on the bottom right where it's just like an upper shadow Upper shadow, upper shadow, upper shadow, upper shadow with no lower shadows. That's a good a good sign of an uptrend. Right now we are in a downtrend, and we we you know we we did try to fight it off a little bit uh, right here. Right, you can see we actually had some upper shadows. Tried to fight it off a little bit right there. We also did something similar back over during the summer lull, kind of in the middle of it. Right, we tried to fight off we tried to fight off the downtrend. We had some upper shadows, but then the downtrend continued for about three more weeks. Uh, three or four more weeks, we had one more fight, and then we started to move back up to the upside. So, you know, I mean, my general expectation in the short term is obviously the market's bearish. Uh, it's a downtrend. Market sentiment is awful. Retail has is leaving in droves, as you can see, right? I mean, that's just what it is. Retail is leaving in droves, um, and they probably will not return until Bitcoin puts in a new all-time high, which is still probably many, many months away at the very least. Okay, so. I would expect a lot more, a lot more grinding here to do. Uh, and again, the stock market, while it is down about one percent on the week, still has put a new all-time highs this year. Um, all right, what else you guys want to talk? <coughs> what else you guys want to talk about? I'm not going to stay on super long because I really don't feel that great. Um, but uh, I'll try to answer a few questions. Yeah, Link is yeah, Link. It's 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 pretty unfortunate. I mean, Link is still up um, on the week, but yeah, you know, the problem is is it keeps pumping when Bitcoin dumps. You know, so it's like it can't catch a break, right? It it, it pumps when Bitcoin dumps. Um, so I, I think the key thing to watch with Link, I mean, yes, we want to watch the Link USD valuation. Okay, there's Link Bitcoin, and then there's Link ETH. And until we're getting a weekly close, if I can find it, you know, ideally we'd like to get a weekly close above this band, above the, the bull mark support band. So I would say look to see if we can break above that on the weekly time frame. Until then, I mean, you just argue it's still a downtrend. Um, but see if we can actually put in a weekly close above the bull mark support band. Again, it is somewhat unlucky. Um, but yeah, I mean, Link keeps pumping right when Bitcoin is about to dump. Someone says, what's the next support level? 43.8. Um, sorry if you can hear my kids in the background. So, um, I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe 42 to 43K. I mean, but it's not, I mean, these things are pretty fluffy, right? 
I mean, clearly this is, is some, some level of support. The, the, the prior drops from that we experienced back in September that took us all the way down to 39K, and then certainly 42K is, is where we had the local top back in January. So obviously, I mean, I, I would think there's going to be some support in that area. We already saw some support at around 42, 43K on this initial wick to the downside. So, I mean, it, it stands to reason that there's going to be some support in that area. That doesn't mean we can't go below. We've gone below it before. Um, but I would imagine there's some support at around uh, 42, 43K and, you know, below that 39 to 40K. Because again, that's where we held the bull mark support band right here. Yeah, I mentioned the Fed minutes already. Yeah, I know people are talking about the VeChain Ether valuation. The, the problem is that, I mean, I, I agree, there's, you know, maybe there's something there. But the, the problem, I think, I don't know why it's not loading. But I, I think the problem is that if Bitcoin stays in a downtrend, I don't know. I, I really don't know if you can take this one to the bank, right? I mean, we've seen these types of, you know, brief breaks to the upside before that then still come back down, right? Here was a brief break, and then it came back down some. Here was a break, and then it still came back down. Yes, it's temporarily breaking up, but if Bitcoin, if Bitcoin stays bearish for a few more weeks, I, I would argue that it's probably more likely to come down than up. Okay, I mean, I, again, I could easily be wrong on that. I'm not taking this trade at all right now. Um, but, but, I mean, I, I think with a bleeding Bitcoin, it certainly has a good chance that this, the VeChain Ether valuation still comes back down, even to where the, the bottoms had previously been. So that would mean another you know, another drop of 20 something percent against ETH. So just keep that in mind. Um, Um, all right. Yeah, DXY. We already, we already talked about DXY already. It's the US dollar currency index. All right, Ethereum. Yeah, so, you know, what we've seen before, I guess, I guess what we saw back in the summer is that after Bitcoin dropped below the bull marks board band, then we saw Ethereum do the same thing. Um, so let me switch this over to can normal candles. So here's the bull marks board band. So back in the summer, Bitcoin dropped below it here, and then I think Ethereum followed what, like a a few weeks later. Okay, a few weeks later, and then Ethereum spent about a month below it, and then it ultimately broke back up to the upside. So right now, Bitcoin dropped below the bull mark support band back in November, and once again, about a month later, you're seeing Ethereum follow. So I mean, again, after after Ethereum followed, it then spent. One, two, three, four, five. And then on the sixth week, it broke back above. I mean, I have no idea if it's gonna play out again, but if, I mean, if it did, you're talking about still a month and a half, right? Of potential consolidation uh, before we could see a, a sustained move back up. All right, some people are talking about a death cross. Are you talking about the 50-day uh, the and the 200-day? Uh, let me go to the daily. 
The problem, I mean, you know, we talked about this before. It's not a death cross there. The the problem is that um, you know, a lot of times a death cross and a golden cross they're 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 lagging indicators, right? So like by the time you get one, you've already experienced a lot of the potential upside and a lot of the potential downside. And during a long sideways range, you can get tons of crosses, right? And we saw that in, in 2019. We saw we had a golden cross, we had a death cross, we had a golden cross, sorry, we had a golden cross, we had a death cross. And then it was on the third golden cross that we actually, you know, went up. And you could argue this was just a long sideways move. Uh, so in this market, you're, you know, you're seeing something similar, right? You saw a golden cross and then a death cross, sorry. <laughs> backwards, uh, a death cross and then a golden cross. And I mean, it looks like we are going to have another death cross, right? I mean, there, this is moving down relatively quickly. It seems like we are going to get one uh, in the next several days. If we were just to extrapolate this out and argue that it's um, um, uh, moving down, let's see, like this, and this is a cross, then, you know, by, by mid-January, but you should remember that a lot of times when you get a death cross, um, you know, it it generally has already shown a lot of the downside. That doesn't mean it can't go down further, but uh, if I show you what I mean. So, so back in the summer, we had a death cross. And on the date that Bitcoin got the death cross, it was at $35,000, okay? So technically it did drop another 6K, but um, the majority of the drop that it experienced to get the death cross in the first place of 45% down had already happened. So it, it was a 45% drop down until the death cross. And then after the death cross, it was another 17 or 18% drop to the downside. But we've also seen before where the day where you get a death cross, you can actually see the market pump, right? So back in March of 2020, we had a death cross and the market was moving up. Um, over here, we had a death cross back in October of 2019 and that corresponded also with a market pump as well. So, you know, I, I know people will talk about the, death, the, the, the golden cross and the death cross. Uh, unfortunately, they are lagging indicators, okay? So they don't, they're not gonna tell you, they're not necessarily gonna tell you that a downtrend is coming. They're sort of telling you that a downtrend has already happened. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what we saw, right? Here we had a golden cross and then we had a, a pretty, pretty quick move back to the downside, right? So golden crosses can often come with moves to the downside. Death crosses can often come with moves to the upside, maybe because it's just the opposite of what a lot of market participants might expect. So, someone says, please overlay the May accumulation to our current shopping. Um, okay, so let me go back to the hype. It might be interesting to look at it like this. So one of the reasons I like this chart is because it, it actually allows you to, to look at these patterns a little bit better. Um, maybe I go to three day candles actually, it might tell a little bit better of a story. So, I'm not really sure, maybe I should take it from up there. So if we take it from the top, that's what it looks like. Um, if we take it from just that initial drop, it looks something like that. So if we try to overlay it, Kind of looks like that, right? If you're if you're trying to like line it up or something, something like that. So the point again is not to say that it has to repeat exactly the same way, but it's just that we did experience a very similar type of structure before, and if it were to play out, you know, we still have a ways to go. All right, um, I think I'll end it there. Uh, if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, click the bell icon, turn on notifications. And well, maybe I'll see what Bitcoin's doing here. It's at 43.9, are we about to drop again? Um, let me go to the minute time frame because I actually can tell us what's going on here in the short term. Sorry, I was about to, I'm probably gonna sign off in like five minutes, but let me just see what Bitcoin's doing. Uh, so we're testing the low that we put in earlier, about an hour ago.
All right, 43.9. Sorry, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to keep up with the chat. <laughs> you guys are quite talkative. Yeah, you can hear a baby crying in the background. All right, we're at 43.9. Um, I'm not gonna stay on too much longer, just waiting to see if. The dominance is finally moving up a little bit, uh, but still technically in a downtrend. So 39.69, still below 40, which honestly to me is kind of crazy that Bitcoin's dropped as much as it has and the dominance is still around 40%. Are there any final questions before I sign off? Someone, okay, I can show the volume. I think I, I had the volume up earlier. Might not be the worst idea to look to see how much volume's coming in. So let me switch this back over to the daily and see if it, like that's the thing, like it's not actually that significant, right? And you would expect to see a, during a major liquidation event, you'd expect to see the volume a lot higher, kind of like it was back over here in December. So maybe we're gonna get it, right? Maybe we are gonna have more more volume before the day is over. We still have about three hours, so obviously there's gonna be some volume between now and then. Um, but a lot of times, a lot of times during these things, you see these major moves to the downside and a lot of people get liquidated. All right, I gotta get going. My kids are, don't sound happy. <laughs> I'm probably looking at the charts too. All right guys, I'm gonna sign off. Make sure you subscribe, I'll see you next time, bye.